Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency, with offices in Jamestown and Dunkirk, helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. From supporting people with disabilities to enjoy great lives to providing health care services that are available to anyone, the Resource Center has been improving our county for more than 60 years. Learn more about how the Resource Center makes a positive difference in people's lives. Is getting vaccinated on your to-do list? We can help you check it off because we make getting vaccinated easy. You've got this because we've got you. To learn more, visit yougotthis.usaging.org. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. I'm Doc Hamels, and welcome back to Chautauqua Sunrise. Hope you're all doing well on this fine Saturday morning. Uh, for those of you that are out and about and you're ready to hit the road, you may want to be uh, planning a little ahead of time because the fog is kind of thick. At least it is around here in Mayville. I don't know how it is in the rest of the county, but uh, um, in the hills, you got some fog. And it's cold. It was like uh, 34, 37 degrees in certain spots. So bundle up. But it's going to be a great weekend. They're saying lots of sunshine. It's going to be really nice. So uh, I don't know if this is any in summer, but it's I guess it is. Uh, it's going to be a nice weekend, so I hope you're all doing well. Uh, good afternoon for all those that are watching anywhere in the world. Uh, we are streaming into Ukraine and uh, Kenya. Natalia, good morning. James in Kenya, good morning. Um, let's see. If throughout the show you have a question or comment, because i got a, a feeling that you may just want to ask questions on this show. Okay? And uh, the phone number is very easy. It's 716-753-5225. All right, and you might say, well, I'm shy. Well, if you're shy, Randy will get your call. He's on the other side of the, of the building, and he'll write it down and put it on a piece of paper, put it over, uh, send it in here, and we'll, we'll uh, get your question or, or comment to our folks. Um, throughout the week, if you have a, or a event or you have something special that you want to share that's uh, suitable for the show, uh, Chautauqua Sunrise at gmail.com. Okay, ChautauquaSunrise at gmail.com. Uh, so you can call us live this morning or you can just send us an email throughout the week and we'll get your announcement or event on the air. Speaking of event, Justin, did you know whose birthday it was this week? Jeff. Jeff Zook, our engineer. Happy birthday, Jeff. Uh, we've all been growing old together. <laughs> I had dark hair when I first started this show. Okay. And, and, well, and I think Jeff had three more hairs. I, th I think that's about it. <laughs> I haven't had All right, uh, you. <laughs> I knew that would get him going. <laughs> Anyways, so um, we like to put a special emphasis every October that, let's see here if I can do this right. 
everything's backwards, so I gotta look in the, in the monitor. So, is our, we have our pink ribbon to remind ourselves, to remind you that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, well, I say it every year, I say it every, month, every time we get to October. Please, if you have any concerns, get checked out. Don't wait. Uh, prevention's everything, and early intervention's even better. And men, believe it or not, you can get breast cancer too. I've known someone that had breast cancer. So uh, get your mammograms, get checked out, go see your doctor, all right? Uh, let's see, I did that, did that, did that. Okay, um, I wanna remind you that this show is uh, broadcast on Spectrum Channel 1301 throughout the week at two and eight. So that's like 14 times you get to watch me if you want. Uh, also, it's on Facebook right now, live, we're streaming. And you can go to YouTube and find all 533 shows up till now. This is show 534. And uh, I w what I want to tell you about this show is that, this, you know, we had the full moon last night. We had fog today. It's really setting up a great environment for our discussion today that we're going to be talking about paranormal things. And we've got some friends here that have been on the show before. And yeah, I think you're going to find it kind of interesting so stay tuned all right I've got some announcements to share with you oh one more thing oh boy I even have it circled good afternoon to all my listeners on WRFA 107.9 low power to the people sorry I I, I was jumping around so excited about my guest being here uh, Tuesdays at one o'clock thanks for checking in always remember if you want to see what we look like right now you're just hearing our voices you can go to YouTube and look us up and look us up by date or by title or whatever but Chautauqua Sunrise is out there and uh, you can watch the whole show as well so good afternoon Tuesdays at one o'clock out of Jamestown all right let's get to my announcements because I do want to get to uh, my guest all right uh, let's go to slide 15 Jeff we're excited to invite you that's them uh, the Chautauqua Center, I believe. It's the Memo Grammy. Memo Grammys. They've done this before. Join them for a day of pampering, community, and health awareness as they mark Breast Cancer Awareness Month this October. What are the Memo Grammys? Memo Grammys are their special event in Dunkirk and Jamestown, combining expedited mammogram screenings for their patients with a fun and relaxing spa day open to everyone in the community. And here's what you get. Listen to this free day a uh, free spa day activities massages manicures makeup de demonstrations fitness class de demos health and beauty information cancer prevention resources delicious food entertainment giveaways and a basket auction expedited mammograms uh, current the, res uh, the excuse me the Chautauqua Center patients can schedule their mammogram screening prior to the event it's a supportive atmosphere. They're creating a welcoming space to encourage women to prioritize their health. Okay, when is it? Here we go. Tuesday, October 22. That's coming up this week from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Chautauqua Center at 75 East 3rd Street in Jamestown. Again, hang on. Stop the cameras. That's in Dunkirk. Dunkirk, Tuesday, October 22nd from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Chautauqua Center. And then uh, Jamestown, Thursday, October 24th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Chautauqua Center at 107 Institute Street. So in Dunkirk, it's over on third, East 3rd, and in Jamestown, it's on Institute Street. Why mammograms uh, matter? Early detection, just like I was saying earlier, of breast cancer through regular mammograms is crucial. They encourage all women to follow the American Cancer Society guidelines for screening. Can't make it, they can still help you. Uh, contact them at 716-294-3995, extension 3. 716-294-3995, extension 3. Okay, and that's the folks from the Chautauqua Center. Let's go on. Slide 16, we're uh, starting, I believe, let's see, at 9.30, okay. So you can either watch the show right now and stay with me, or you can leave and go to the Lakeshore Center for the Arts. What's going on? There's something called the Kenya Connections. Uh, exploring and experiencing the beauty of a nation. Uh, Lakeshore Center for the Arts is the Presbyterian Church in Westfield. It's the back side of it. Uh, the entrance is right across from the Patterson Library, so it's not part of the church, but they lease uh, rooms upstairs. And what's going on is that our friend um, Karen Cockrum is 
is uh, presenting her experiences in Kenya. She was on the show a couple months ago. And at 9.30, she talks about the medical system there and, and so forth. At 11, she'll be reviewing the educational system. There'll be a, an authentic Kenyan lunch. At 12.30, stories of the people and volunteering, and there's gonna be some snacks. And then two o'clock, she'll be talking about flora and fauna in safaris. Okay, so that's today from 9.30 through two o'clock at Lakeshore Center for the Arts with Karen Cockrum talking about Kenya. All right, let's go to the movies for some scary things. Ready? Cuckoo in the Rocky Horror Picture Show are going to be shown this week, coming up. All right, Hunter Schaefer and Dan Stevens star in Cuckoo. It's going to be uh, Wednesday the 23rd at 7 p.m. Reluctantly, a 17-year-old Gretchen leaves her American home to live with her father, who has just moved into a resort uh, in the German Alps with his new family. Arriving at their future residence, they are greeted by Mr. Koenig, or Koenig, which means king in German, her father's boss, who takes an inexplicable interest in Gretchen's mute half-sister, Elma. I don't write this stuff, okay, I'm just reading. Uh, something doesn't seem right in this tranquil vacation paradise. Gretchen is plagued by strange noises and bloody visions until she discovers a shocking secret that also concerns her own family. I've never heard of this movie before. Cuckoo is rated R, and it's 102 minutes long. Then, in the cult classic, the Rocky Horror Picture Show will be shown this coming Saturday, October 25, at 10 p.m. Sweethearts, Brad and Janet, stuck with a flat tire during a storm, it's always a storm, discover the eerie mansion of Dr. Frankenfurter, a transvestite scientist. As their innocence is lost, Brad and Janet meet a houseful of wild characters, including a ro rocking biker, played by Meatloaf, and a creepy butler. Uh, through the lab elaborate dances and rock songs, Frank Inverter unveils his latest creation, a muscular m man named Rocky. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is rated R. It's 101 minutes long. Audience participation, props, uh, excluding super splash squirt guns and hot dogs, and costuming is, a, is encouraged. Prop fun packs will be sold to patrons while supplies last. I don't know what's in a prop pack. I've never been to one of these. I just know that they do a lot of crazy things. It's a lot of fun. Uh, upcoming movies is there, uh, at the Reg is Michael Keaton's return of uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, don't say it a third time. Uh, will be uh, Wednesday, October 30th, and then uh, da, 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 Temples, and they got, uh, uh, there's gonna be the uh, Cat Video Fest. I've never heard of that one before. And we'll be talking about those as they come up. So lots of good things over at the Reg Line, and tickets are only $8, and uh, you can give them a call at 484-7070. All right, I'm trying to stay in order here. All right, this is from our friend, uh, uh, let's see, where are we here? From the Veterans Group, okay. Uh, they, uh, there's a slide 18. It's honoring those who have served. This is gonna be held no, uh, Saturday, November 9, at the Regilinity Center for the Arts with uh, ins inspirational speaker, Eric McElvaney. Honoring those who served. Time and location, November 9, 6 p.m. at the Reg. And this is a free inspirational event honoring local veterans with s this particular speaker. What's the deal here? Eric earned a mechanical engineering degree from the United States Naval Academy in 2006 while preparing for his service as a Marine Corps infantry officer. He deployed three times as a Marine and in Afghanistan on his final tour was wounded after stepping on an IED. Eric en encountered a life-changing event that began his next journey as he suffered the amputation of his right leg below the knee. Faced with a physical challenge and an uncertain future, Eric made a promise to himself to run an Ironman triathlon. If you don't know what an Ironman triathlon is, it, that is challenging, okay? Uh, on his journey from the hospital bed in Southern California to the finish line in Kona, Hawaii, he realized that the challenge and adversity he was up against and the techniques he used to reach the finish line can be used against the challenges as we all um, experience things. So combined with his Christian faith and his experiences, this is, should be quite the uh, um, presentation. Cindy Reedy from the uh, <clears throat> department or agency of uh, Chautauqua Veterans uh, Advocates uh, 
they uh, support the veterans in their area, and I know Greg Carlson will be here uh, coming up pretty soon, and we'll be talking about things about veterans and, and the services, and so this is a special shout out to veterans of something you can do. Okay, looks like the next page, we've got some upcoming events. Okay, this one, uh, I don't know if I remember this one. 2024 Swedish Day Expo and Festival. It's gonna be held October 19th, that's like today. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., it's at the Brockton Central School. Arch Festivals presents 2024 Swedish Day Expo. This is a free event to attend. Uh, join them for live entertainment by TVM and John Savage. Uh, free door prizes, basket raffle, food trucks, community organizations, local businesses, craft and food vendors. Okay, Karen. Cord Pharmacy will be administering a limited supply of flu and uh, COVID vaccines from 10 a.m. till noon, free of charge, as long as you got your insurance cards. So, Sweetest Day Expo in Brockton Central School today. Then, Dunkirk Lighthouse Ghost Hunts. October 19th today at 7, October 25 at 7, October 26 at 7. Hmm, I see a theme that's starting to form here. Uh, it's going to be held at the Dunkirk Historical Lighthouse over at One Lighthouse Point. Dunkirk Lighthouse Investigative Ghost Hunts 2024 schedule uh, is being presented by the Village Haunts, a season-long collaboration with Dunkirk Lighthouse and Museum. They invite you to attend one or more of the seven investigations of the historic Dunkirk Lighthouse. Each event includes a lighthouse tour and paranormal investigation. It's only $30 a person. Ghost hunts always sell out, so order early. So the phone number there is 366-5050, 366-5050. And uh, for each one of the uh, tours, it, they limit to 15 people. So uh, if you're interested, check it out. Then, if you're not into ghost, public skate at the Northwest Arena. Uh, Today, tomorrow, and next Saturday and Sunday, and then the following Saturday, it looks like. So October 19, October 20, 26, 27, and November 2. Times from 3.30 to 6, 1.30 to 4. It just depends. Each day's a little different. So what is it? Their family uh, public skating events are the perfect way to spend quality time with the whole family or even come with friends. Adults can rent a trainer bar for the kids and grandchildren who are learning to skate and may even choose to hold on themselves. Always check the schedule at the northwestarena.com calendar for the latest updates and schedules. Uh, please check out their other calendar listing the ice bumper car schedule, which differs from the family skate uh, schedule. Admission $7, skates $3, and skate trainer rental is $5. So, sounds like a fun evening. Go check it out. And then, let's see, I did that one, did that one. Okay, then, uh, this is a reminder that if you have pets and you need to get uh, rabies shots, the Chautauqua County Health Department is announcing a free rabies vaccination clinic sponsored by the city of Jamestown. Uh, animals must be pre-registered to receive vaccinations. Vaccinations will pr be provided free of charge to all dogs, cats, and domesticated ferrets. I don't ever remember talking about ferrets before, but I guess now we do. Uh, the ferret has to be three months of age and older. October 26th, at the Taylor Training Center at 240 Harrison Street in Jamestown. All right, so for more information, give them a call at 753-4481. Uh, that's out of the County Health Department, or you can talk to the City of Jamestown Clerk at 483-7612. And we got one more slide and then we're done. This is just a reminder that tonight is the May Westfield Mayville Gold Rush, and I, there might be tickets left, I don't know, but if you're interested, you can stop at Easton Hall around 5.30 and see if there's a ticket left. It's a fun evening, we're giving away $1,000 in our raffle, and that's sponsored by the uh, South Ripley Solar Project, and I believe there's well over 35 other prizes, cash and gift certificates and so forth. So that starts at 5.30, the drawing starts at seven, you can bring your own snacks. Uh, uh, and the best I can tell you is uh, if you want to take it, stop by Easton Hall. All right, right now we're going to take a breather and I'll be right back. We have a service announcement for you. Stay tuned. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy.
Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. People don't realize there's a high pro uh, prevalence of autism in our, in our world. And uh, just like anything else, if you have any concerns, talk to your pediatrician. And uh, there are different organizations that you can talk to about autism. Okay? All right. My guests have been patiently uh, waiting in the wings to come on. And I want to uh, welcome back Mike Palero, who is the founder of the Jamestown Paranormal Investigators. And with him is Catherine Og Miller and Hope Hill. Good morning, folks. Good morning. How are you? Thank you for having us. Well, you're welcome. Uh, you know, Mike, it's been a while since you all been here. I, I don't even know, it's been a few years anyways. I think it's been a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah, and hope you were here last time. Mm -hmm. And Catherine, this is your first time with us, it so is. welcome. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I thought about inviting you folks at this time of year because, I don't know, it's just that time of year that people are dressing up and, and they seem to be focusing on paranormal things and, and uh, enjoy a good scare and a little spook. And we were talking about haunted houses and lighthouse tours and things like that. So people have a keen interest. I've seen some statistics where um, they've uh, interviewed people, and I think it's something like 80% of the world population believes in ghosts. I mean, it's, but nobody wants to talk about it. You guys do, and stuff like that. So, Mike, what in the world is the Jamestown Paranormal Investigators? What are you, what's your mission? Um, our mission, we started in 2010 um, to help people understand the paranormal. Um, we have helped quite a few people in the past, uh, and that's pretty much the mission, is mm -hmm. to help people. Um, okay. We don't charge for our services. Everything is free. Mm -hmm. um, but through the time that we've been uh, investigating, We've done probably over 100 cases, if somewhere around there, um, since 2010. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yes, we do go to different places, you know, like theaters and stuff like that. For, But mainly, JPI was made to help people okay. understand. You know, this, is yeah. to me, is a throwback to what I used to watch, Ghost Hunters, with Jason Hawes and, oh, yeah. and, and Grant, uh, Grant Wilson? Grant, Grant? Grant Wilson. Wilson. I got it right. It's been a while. And the, the theme I always saw on that show was <coughs> exactly what you're saying. We're here to help. And help, help what? It's the knowledge. It's the helping them understand what is happening because a lot of people that reach out and connect with us, it's because they're afraid or they have children involved and it's their first um, interaction or experience with the paranormal. So what is the paranormal? What does that even mean? Uh, and just providing the knowledge that they need to understand it and also to make them aware that they're, they're okay. You know, their children are going to be okay, they're okay. They just want to know that they're safe in their home. So there's just a lot of knowledge behind it. The education of what the paranormal field is and understanding if you understand it you can't be afraid of it well you can be but it helps people <laughs> to not be as afraid of it you know when you when you read history books or you look at various things on TV historical now I'm talking is that the paranormal has been around forever mm -hmm. you know for whatever reason it's been tucked away or hidden and other people talk about it everyday life you know and it, it's culturally it's interesting to look across different countries how they they handle the paranormal mm -hmm. some embrace it some hide it some don't want to talk about it yep some make money on it mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, let's get Catherine in here so Catherine how long have you been involved with this group uh, I joined last spring so I'm the newest member of the okay. group so why did you join well, why why so I had an experience um, at work at the museum I work at that opened me up to this side of things. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met everyone at JPI. And I got to know everyone, and I got to learn about what they did, how, how we investigate, and I expressed interest in joining. So, and okay. I, was, they were, I was lucky enough that they would have me. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, Mike, how many folks are in your group? We have, uh, we have seven. Seven, I do believe. I could be wrong. Um, seven. Yeah, seven. We have um, <coughs> Jen. She's been with me from the get-go. Um, then we got uh, Nate. Um, he's pretty much like our tech. He does all the DVRs and all that good stuff. And then my brother 
and my niece from Batavia, um, Danny and um, Danielle. Um, they pretty much come in when we have bigger things going on. You know, we if we do a private home, we can't bring seven people in somebody's house. You know, so I just pick and choose who I'm going to bring in, mm -hmm. and um, well, we also have Aaron too. I was going to say we have eight. Yeah, we got Aaron. So <laughs> we, we got eight. eight. We just grew. We got eight. <laughs> so, so, sorry, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Aaron. I'm like, wait, hold on. No, we're missing something. But Aaron, if you're watching this, you know I always do this about you, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, we got eight people, and we all work well together. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun time, but we take everything that we do seriously, too. So. Sure. Okay. Cool. So three of us, he has acquired from an investigation because he investi they investigated my grandmother's house. And then Aaron was on an investigation in Gowanda with you guys. And then Catherine, we investigated her place of business. So some of us come along after yeah. we've been on an investigation, you know, or they've been at our place, so. Okay, so yeah. we, we, we're using the word paranormal. You said you had an experience. But we haven't talked about what was it. <laughs> So mm -hmm. what do people experience? Let's start with Mike. We get phone calls a lot from people saying it's all over the board. Um, footsteps, voices, um, I'm being attacked. Um, now when you sit there and you tell me that you're being attacked, um, that could arrange from a lot of different things. So um, we have, a, we have a, uh, a list of questions to ask these people, which Hope does all that. Um, but that's pretty much what they do. Um, Mike, I, I, I've been, um, I'm laying in bed and I feel like I'm being scratched. I wake up in the, middle, in the morning and I got scratches on my leg or I hear voices or my lights flicker. And that's pretty much the claims that we get. And then when we get there, you know, we, okay, your lights flicker. Okay, let's check your outlets. Let's check everything, you know. We don't go in there to look for come and say hey your house is haunted i would prefer to say it's not a ghost it's this or that um emfs um that can cause a lot of anxiety um you right. can have what's, what's emfs <laughs> emf is or emf um, i'm sorry emf electric magnetic field okay um you can hallucinate um you can be sick Huh? Nauseousness. Yeah, nauseousness. Um, so that's why we check everything like that. Um, okay, so if a house had EMF, how, what causes that? A lot of times it's, I'm not an electrician, but um, normally something in your home is not grounded correctly enough. Right. Now, a story um, a while back, a lady said that she was seeing things and being um, touched and everything, and we went and we found out that her dryer was not grounded whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we told her husband, look, you gotta ground your dryer. You got a lot of EMF coming up through here and she sits right above the dryer every day and watches TV. Ooh. I said, so that just gives that, that whole, you know, um, EMF just shooting straight up through. And when we went there first, she was, in a, she was using a walker and um, we went in, investigated, and uh, we went through, you know, she had a pile of pills next to her bed. Mm -hmm. um, weren't really probably supposed to, but we were <laughs> going through some and doing some research on them, and we found out half of her pills would actually... Um, and I know people that causes yeah. Yeah. hallucinations, visions, and so forth. Yeah, and a lot of people don't ones. realize it. They don't. They got to read the, the fine print on some of those pills or the combination of those pills, right? Absolutely. So yeah. I, I guess in the term would be you're debunking things. Right? Well, pretty much, yeah. That's what I like to do is to debunk. Um, mm -hmm. And then we went back afterwards to see how she was doing, and she actually walked to the door and gave us a hug. She didn't have to have her walk her no more. Um, they grounded the dryer, and she told the doctor about all these pills, and he took her half off the pills, and she's not having any more mm -hmm. problems at home. Mm -hmm. So I like to hear stories like that, because that tells me that we actually help somebody. You know, um, but that's pretty much what we do. We go in and we'll check your electric, we'll check the, I hear banging. 
Okay, let's go downstairs. Somebody flushed the toilet. Let me see what's going on down here with these pipes, you know. Um, and then after that, then we shut lights off and then we just start investigating through the night. So. Okay. So sometimes there's there's a, a logical answer for whatever they're experiencing. Absolutely. Okay. So um, when you had your experience, mm -hmm. Catherine, was it sounds? Or? No. So I actually... I was walking upstairs to my office and I saw a shadow figure mm -hmm. in the corner. Um, and there's just something that really throws you off when you're walking into work, you know you're the only one there and you see someone else out of the corner of your eye. That really throws you off. And I, I did like a whoa and it was gone. Um, but that really, that really prompted me to reach out um, because there was, um, you know, I, I hear footsteps. It's also an old house. It was built in 1821. Mm -hmm. um, but you just, I hear things. I see things out of the corner of my eye. And it helped after JPI came because it was like, okay, I know something's here, but I don't need to be afraid of it. Um, I don't walk that way to my office anymore. <laughs> I take the <laughs> other stairs. <laughs> but <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen it since. Okay. That, um, that hallway of yours mm -hmm. is kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a hallway right outside my office that leads to our storage room and then leads downstairs to our museum galleries. And there's always something happening in the hall. When, you guys, when we set up cameras for investigations, something always messes with it's the, the camera in that hallway. It's the most active area, mm -hmm. probably I would think the sometimes, building, I feel. Sometimes the cameras will work and then it won't. Or yeah. sometimes something gets moved. Um, so, you said it, it frightened you initially? Frightened's so. not the, I think startled. it startled me okay. more than anything. Um, because I'd been, I'd been hearing, I'd been hearing footsteps, I'd been seeing things out of the corner of my eye. So I already was kind of aware, um, but seeing, seeing a full shadow figure was <laughs> definitely so if somebody, startling. All right, so I'll throw this to the group. So if somebody right now is watching, and they're bashful. Uh, they don't want to call. They don't want to people to think they're crazy. Um, and they see a shadow figure. What should they do? Call us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, your phone calls are all private, obviously. Um, and and without giving you your phone number, because we want them to go through channels, they, they would go to your Facebook page, right? Yeah, go to our Facebook page and um, just let us know what's going on, and then. You can always leave your phone number, and then you know. Okay. But we also um, have a website yeah. that you can okay. submit yeah. a form on mail. So, what is a shadow figure? Well, that's interesting because there's a lot of. If you start <coughs> googling on the internet about shadow figures, they're going to find a lot of information that they're um, supposedly evil. Um, from what I understand, or some of the research that we have done, or interactions we have. It's really hard to identify, you know, are they male, are they female, what exactly is it? Um, the ones that we've encountered or know of don't always really interact with us, but typically a shadow figure will take on the form or the height size of a person, but again, it, it's difficult to detect whether they're male or female, mm -hmm. um, why they're there. Uh, you know, we... There's really nobody knows what a sh shadow figure is or why it forms or why they're there. They say they're other dimensional from yeah. other realms. Um, I um, don't really believe that a shadow figure can actually interact with us. I think they're just there. Um, that's my belief. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Everybody, no, everybody in the group everybody has, has a different yeah. belief than, you know, <laughs> but I think they're just there. I don't know why they're there, but the ones we've encountered have not interacted with us. Right, and we, we have not. So it would be what you might refer to as apparition, it just No, appears? it looks literally like a shadow. So oh. like if you were standing mm -hmm. out on the sidewalk and your shadow projects, that's what it looks like. like oh, one so day it's very was, dark then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no day, definable features, yeah, just no, like yep. a silhouette. Just a silhouette. Mm -hmm. um, I was backing up into my garage the one night and in my backup camera, I saw what was like a shadow. It was a shadow person walk by and I kept backing up and then I stopped and I was like, oh wait, they're mm -hmm. not supposed to be there, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, it literally I've just looks like, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it just looks like a person. Okay, so that's a category of paranormal shadow oh, yeah. figures? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's sort of like an unknown. There's a lot of information, but none of it really 
I, I don't always agree with a lot of it either because I don't really feel they're evil. Like I said, the ones we've encountered, they haven't been evil. They haven't been bad. They, they're, they they're just, just there. You know, them. we've had um, people work with us on a team on investigations. Like we had a medium come in that went through after did like a house um, blessing and stuff, but she went through and did a read and there was a shadow figure. It wouldn't interact. You know, so it's it's interesting. I feel like there's a lot of information out there, but it doesn't really narrow it down to or, or single it out of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of times you hear about residual energy or residual stuff. Uh, is that a residual or is something different, you think? I don't think it's a residual. I feel it's something different. Yeah, it's okay. something different. Uh, residual is something that happens at a certain time and you can't interact with it, it doesn't interact with you, it doesn't know you're there, it probably doesn't even care if you're there, even if it did. But um, it happens like on um, certain anniversary dates, like um, a wedding date or um, the death date or whatever it may be, but it's, it's an imprint. It's like a tape recorder that gets replayed over and over and over again. You can watch somebody walk down the stairs, it will never interact with you, it's just a residual, it's there. Um, How do you get rid of those? You pretty much don't really. Um, <laughs> I mean, if they're not gonna bother you, what's the difference, you know? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, well, people are watching going like, well, you can't get rid of the shadow figures, you can't get rid of the. <laughs> well, that's the problem. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody that probably could. Mm. Um, we don't do that, but we do have contacts with people that if our clients say, hey, I wanna get rid of whatever's in my house, I don't wanna hear. Well, we have contacts with people that actually can go in and do that for them. But after that happens, it's not JPI anymore. It's just the client and off. that person. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, we do have that. And Hope has had somebody go yeah. a couple times to different places for us because that's what they wanted. And what are the titles of these people? Well, what names? What, what, like, who are they? To, to back up a little bit, the ones that they want to get rid of is usually the intelligent, mm -hmm. is the intelligent um, ghost or spirit. All right, we'll get to that. Yeah. Right. Um, they're mediums. They're mediums that have the training and the, um, you know, the background to be able to go in and do the blessings or the, the cleanses and to be able to cross over. So that's some of the people that I know. You Years ago, you said you had a gentleman that was a minister that would come in and help. Yep. Mm -hmm. The paranormal so. pastor is what he was called. Yeah. Mm. But he moved away and... But yeah. yeah, but we try to reach out and try to find people that specialize in specific areas for the client to be able to you know, further help them. Because every haunting is different. Yes. Every haunting is different, so. Okay, so you mentioned um, hope intelligent yes what do we mean by that they interact oh, they interact. Um, yes those are the spirits that we are getting the EVP sessions with or the entities it's interesting because a lot of people say spirits a lot of people say entities some just want to call it paranormal but ghosts the ghosts they'll interact with us so if we're asking questions it will respond to us in some way um, so they let us know that yeah we know you're talking to us we know that um, you're here and they let us know that they're here so they're the ones that interact. Those are the ones that people usually are like, okay, I don't want them here anymore. <laughs> Why are they there to begin with? Um, <sighs> my home, I've lived here forever. Yeah. Um, my, my wife, I don't want to leave my family. Um, tragedy. Tragedy, and the thing is, the longer that they stay, for example, say, you know, a, a husband and wife. The husband dies, husband stay, um, husband dies, wife stays and she's okay with that she interacts sooner or later that could be bad um the energy could be worse um she could start feeling sick she you know because the spirits aren't supposed to stay here you know they're supposed to find that well light. that was the, the crux of my question why are they there it's um, also the location mm -hmm. yeah the location or you're supposed to find the light and you're supposed to go to your next plane mm -hmm. okay um some don't um I have a belief that when you die, there's two different things. You got a spirit and you got a ghost, okay? They're not the same thing. Um, a ghost is something that, the, that the, um, they decided that I want to stay here. They're stuck in that one spot. If I want to stay here in this house, they can stay in the house, but I don't believe that they can wander off and go wherever they want to go. A spirit is something that has 
went to the light, if you believe in that, and go to the next plane. So now that spirit can come and go here or there. They can follow you wherever you want to go. So a spirit moved on, ghost is trapped. Does a ghost become a spirit? If it moves on. All right, so we're talking about state of being. So you can Pretty be much. a ghost and move. All right, that's I'm, I'm not fooling around here. I'm no, just, I, no, I, I understand I, I'm that. I'm trying to understand <laughs> where, where the difference. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right. my belief. All right. Okay. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years, you know. Um, I've seen a lot of things, and I've learned a lot of stuff in the past, you know, from paranormal investigators way above me, you know. Um, there's no professionals in this business because you're always learning all the time. Every place you go to, you learn something different. Mm -hmm. So there's, when they say, oh, he's a professional. No, he's just on TV. He's not a professional because he's still got things to learn, right, you know. Right. So, so uh, Catherine told me how she got involved with her shadow figure. How did you get involved with all this? Oh, my lordy. Um, the house I lived in, um, the upstairs was making some creepy noises and my wife and I would be sitting downstairs at night watching TV and then there's people walking around upstairs in the empty apartment and I'm like, there's nobody up there, you know, so I keep going up looking around, you know, and nothing's there. So I asked the landlord at the time, I says, look, man, is this place haunted? Did you rent me a haunted house, you know? He goes, well, <laughs> I said, oh, great. This can't start. <laughs> well, it's not a good way to start <laughs> a conversation. <laughs> Oh, but, I didn't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in the paperwork. Um, he says my grandfather, my uncle hung himself in the attic, and I don't believe that he ever left. So he's a ghost. So he's a ghost. So I'm see like, how fast I learn? <laughs> see, you're learning. Um, I'm like, oh, great, you know. So that's, I went downstairs, and I just started getting on the computer, and I started looking, and I mm. started learning about it. And here I am, 20 years later, still looking looking for evidence and trying to help people out because I needed help. So was the grandpa up there? Um, yes, he was. Um, he was there. Um, never got to see him, but I do know that he was there. Um, just things, you walk up in the attic and you could feel it. Yeah. You don't belong up here. You need to go back downstairs, you know? And you can feel it. all his tools are still up in the attic. Everything oh, that belonged right. to him yeah, was there. Lots of residual stuff there. Absolutely. Lots of energy. So I needed help. So I was looking around, but I didn't go and call any paranormal team because there wasn't one around back then. Mm -hmm. So, well, heck, let's just start one, you know? Mm -hmm. And here I am 20 years later and still doing it. You said you, you could feel when you walked into the room. So, if, again, for people who are listening right now, they might say, well, maybe I have that same experience. So what does it feel like, or what, what do you mean by that? Mm. <laughs> me? Yeah, you. Um, Everybody's different. Everybody's got different mm -hmm. feelings, yeah. Me, I cannot walk into a room and tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. I can't say if it's a male or female, okay? But when I walk in a room, and if it's heavy, and I get this heavy feeling, or I just get the chills that something's watching me, I have a pretty good feeling that there's something here. Right. You know, now like hope, um, she might be able to go in and say, yep, it's a female, she's here for this and that. Mm -hmm. um, I, can't, I can't do that. Um, but that I way. know <laughs> that, I know that there's something there because it's, I got that feeling that something's watching me and it's so heavy. Okay. You know, and that's my way. So then, um, so you experienced the shadow of here <laughs> and saw it. Did you get a sensation? No, Just not started. not at that time. Um, I've gotten sensations on other investigations. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it's it's like a tightness in my chest mm -hmm. that I start to feel, um, and like a, like a, I get a little shaky um, if the energy's really heavy mm -hmm. in a specific area. Um, but no, at that at that time, I saw the figure. I didn't I didn't feel anything. Okay, and then hope obviously. Like saying you're different, so <laughs> he's different. Um, what's your experience when you walk, when you first feel something, or, or um, again, I'm trying to make this kind of educational for folks. Yeah, to know so what to look for. When it first began, um, before I had you know more of awareness or education behind it, I would get the tightness in the chest, um, very labored breath. I'd have a difficult time breathing. I'd feel like my throat was very thick. Uh, and I'd get lightheaded. As soon as I'd walk into a place, I'd be like, oh, okay, something's here. Um, now that I've worked with the energy a little bit more and just through my own research and education, now, yes, I can go into a place. I might still get lightheaded and I'll feel a little off balance, 
but it's knowing how to protect your energy and knowing like, okay, this can't hurt me, this isn't going to bother me, um, and, and just going in. So I, I still feel it, still feels heavy sometimes. Sometimes if it's really heavy energy, I get really lightheaded, um, but it, it takes a lot to really knock me off balance like it used to, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just definitely a change in the air. The energy changes, we all feel that, we feel mm -hmm. the shift, either a heaviness, you, we can feel, um, whenever it leaves a room or something comes in and it changes. So it's all about the air and the energy of how it comes in and out. I think going back to the very beginning of our discussion, people are afraid. So they're afraid that they're gonna get hurt or whatever. How do you protect, how do you protect yourself? Me, I, um, when we get somewhere, we set everything up and then I just take my time by myself. I, yes, I pray, I say, you know, the Lord's Prayer, you know, I, um, I ask, um, I'm a big believer in St. Michael's, um, Christ, I got him on my arm, I got everything on St. Michael's, so, you know, I ask him to protect me and my team to wherever we got to go, um, that's me, um, everybody else, I don't know if every member of the team does any of that, um, I know Hope does. Hope she pretty much like <laughs> puts a bubble around all of us, you know. Um, but that's how I do it. I just take time for myself. I clear my mind. You know, you, you got to go in with an open mind. You mm -hmm. know, um, I can't. I can't go in there thinking that no, this is not haunted. There's no such thing as a ghost. You know, and I'm negative with everything. I got to have an open mind, but I also have to be protected at the same time because I can't bring whatever you got here to my house. So it sounds to me like you were kind of like bringing a, a charge or energy into yourself that, that that's where you want to be. You kind of have this feeling. Yeah. I have no idea. Did you just... That was oh. a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that sound before. That was weird. We have a phone call. Should we take a phone call? Sure. sure. All right. Uh, good morning, wherever you are. <laughs> good morning. This is Linda Spaulding. Good morning to your paranormal group. Thank you. Uh, it, okay. It's great to hear from you. Uh, my dog just... Uh, uh, just sensed a spirit, so he's making some noise. Dogs do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I missed some of your uh, presentation earlier. I wanted to ask you, uh, do you see, do, do any of you uh, detect what they call stick people with the, um, uh, the SLS the, camera? The, the, uh, behind vision? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. SLS. Okay. So the question is, do you do you pick up those yeah, people? Definitely, mm -hmm. we do. Um, we have do. had that a couple times, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting. I I, I have, um, I I have experienced it a number of times in different places. It, it's quite interesting. Uh, it, it's, it's always a it's always a happy thing. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, but I don't want to hold you up with your presentation. But there's a place in Jamestown. Uh, it's the Westbridge Building. Do you know where that is? Uh, what street? On Third Street. What's it called? The Westbridge Building. Oh, I don't know. oh yes, I do know oh. where that's at. Well, that used to be a train depot years ago. Right. Mm. And I, uh, Chautauqua Opportunities had offices there. Yep. And after five o'clock, <laughs> when everybody was gone, uh -huh. the sick people would come. Oh, oh, you've seen them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, not all the time, you know, not too much, but they would come. Uh, and it was very friendly. I continued working. And the interesting thing about this, two other people that I used to work with there told me they were, they were sisters. They told me they experienced the same thing after five o'clock. Oh, in interesting. Huh. Well, there you go. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you for your presentation. It's always exciting to hear about the paranormal. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And uh, uh, people, when they die, they're just going into another realm of existence that mm -hmm. we can't always perceive right now that's right okay well put all right well yes. thanks lynn we'll talk to you have soon. a wonderful weekend it's a gorgeous day all right you thank you the same thank you bye-bye <laughs> so they kind of 
Linda kind of supports what we were saying is that a lot of people do have mm -hmm. ex experiences, but either they don't talk about it or they. I have found that <coughs> Chautauqua County is pretty haunted. Why? I don't know. It's just the places that we've done around here. You know, we've. <coughs> We've done the Little Theater. Um, matter of fact, we have an event coming up in the Little Theater. Um, we can talk about that in a little bit here, but um, we've done the train station. We've done the Reg. We've done the Spire. Uh, we've done people's homes here in town. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the history. It's just, yeah, it's just a history, but I have found out that Chautauqua County is pretty, pretty active. Well, it's, it's pretty old county. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. It was the frontier for many, many years, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we, you and Catherine and I were talking about Lafayette coming through here mm -hmm. back in 1825. Well, we were, we were, the county was around long before that. Right. So, I mean, we go back to the 1700s, 1600s yep. in some cases. Yep, so, yep. it's lo lots, of, lots of residual history and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. But you, you got some pictures that you sent to the studio. So, I thought, let's do that and then we'll come back to your, your event that you're going to have at the Little Theater. Yeah, sure. So, Jeff, if you want to bring those photos up or whatever we have, we'll take a look. Okay, we're looking at some stairs. What are we looking at here? Well, if you can look it's in dead. the middle. In the middle. You see like something with legs. Yes, I do. A torso. I do. And on the right hand, well, I'm looking at it, it'd be on my right hand side. But there's a doorway right there. It looks like it's going through the door. See the little white line there? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh okay, now I see the door. Okay. Yep, that's a doorway. And um, we were doing a walkthrough. This is at the Little Theater. Um, Lucille Ball Little Theater. Um, we were just doing a walkthrough to get um, the layout because we were going to investigate there. And I'm just walking around and I'm just snapping pictures. And this is what came up. Um, the picture after that, it wasn't there. Um, All right, what you're saying is you took a picture of this stairwell and this showed up. Apparition. Yes. What is it? Apparition. It looks like an apparition to me. All right, again, all right. Now we, I used apparition earlier, mm -hmm. and you said, no, that's not an apparition. So what is an apparition <laughs> then? What you see on the photo here, it's something you typically can see through. It might take on the form of a person or maybe an animal, or so it looks white, typically white in color. Does it, um, is it in, in, intellectual, intelligent? Intelligent. Does it interact with you, I guess is the word I want to use. Sometimes? Sometimes it can be. I don't know about that one because I never really had a chance to... It was just passing through? It was just mm -hmm. passing through, right. Do they ever, I mean, does an apparition stop and smile, wave, say hello, talk? It doesn't usually take on the full... Sometimes we can <coughs> see an apparition that's a full body of a person, but that's very rare. So, mm -hmm. like, this is just an apparition, but it's almost just like an outline. Like, we can tell it's a figure, but it doesn't manifest into something... Okay. that like us like looking at each other all right so it's very very yeah transparent. it takes yeah. a lot of energy gotcha. for something to manifest oh, I've heard that. fully okay a lot of energy yeah okay. our batteries were drained i hear that all the time on yeah. those different shows all right let's, let's do the next slide there jeff how many do we have you know? i think there's four okay let's go to number two Oh, there's someone we know. <laughs> Go ahead, Catherine. Do you want to talk about this? Sometime? All right. So this is also at the Lucille Ball Little Theater, um, just off stage. Uh, we were all we were doing a walking a walk through mm -hmm. of the building to get a, kind of get our bearings. And so you see me in the foreground. I do. And then in the background, there's our other investigator, Erin, and she's facing towards that door. So that's her back to us. Okay. Um, but that is not her head. The man um, with that the hat. So that is something clearly mm -hmm. a taller man wearing a hat. It looks like a baseball cap or something. What is that? Well, Perhaps I thought it looked like a full brim oh, hat oh, oh, that oh, went oh, all the way now. around. Okay, okay, like a, okay, like mm -hmm. a, yes, 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 I see it now. Uh, and he just walked between us, and we didn't know until we went and looked back at our photos. I think Hope got that photo. Yeah, and you can see the bar, like or the the metal. I think that was a bar or something. Behind, or I don't even know what it is. I don't know what the them two lines area. are. Coat rack yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah, but it's like through the neck area. So you can see like the separation of it. So he was like literally standing. He came and stood like where she was standing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really interesting. Because yeah. one of their claims is a man with the jacket and the hat. So apparition. Er mm -hmm. Well, yep. I don't have they seen I a full so. body or apparition? Yeah. They said, yeah. and some people said that they have seen full yeah. bodies. Um, but they have also claimed that in that spot, Walking through the door and down the stairs, they would always see a taller man with a, um, a black hat. Ooh. Now that one spot on there that looks like maybe a bear's head, 
You see that? Mm -hmm. That's my investigator's arm taking a picture of the doorway. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no, that's not a bear. Okay. <laughs> that's her arm, but okay. we're looking at the head on above her. And you can almost see her behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can see how it, because like that the shape is very though. black, yeah. and like yeah. she's kind of behind. So, so does yeah. anybody know who this is? Guess we don't, it? but no. I'm sure um, Aubrey, Aubrey is his name. Aubrey. I'm sure that he has names for a lot of people that walk through there. Okay. So, so this is evidence. This is, this is evidence. It's yeah. not, not blurred film or, you know. Nah, okay. We don't. You know, the, the, yeah. the naysayers out there. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. We're not on TV. We don't blur stuff. All right. <laughs> what, are, what are we looking at now? Do you want to talk about this one, Catherine, or do you want me to? No, that's um, I can. very <laughs> odd. I actually believe this is my first investigation with you guys. Uh, we were at the Hollywood Theater in Gowanda, mm -hmm. and that's our investigator, Danny, standing there in the balcony, and you see someone sitting in front of him. Yes. And there was nobody there. It looks like an older gentleman with yeah. hair does. and maybe our a meter, beard and mustache. Our meter kept going off in that area. Yep. So we were down at the stage downstairs, and we were looking up and just taking consecutive photos, because we usually take several in a row, so mm -hmm. that way we can see what develops or if we get the same picture in the next right. um, clip. Anyway, so the meter kept going off, so Danny's like, oh, I'll go up there and stand and see mm -hmm. what's going on, and that's what happened. Looks so, like Colonel Sanders. Yeah, right? Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Super cool, and again, just sitting there, not interacting. Correct, almost just like there. he was watching. But Dan yeah. couldn't see him. No. no. None Isn't that a little no, disturbing to know that yeah. there's somebody yeah. next to you you can't see him? <laughs> yeah. That would bug yeah. me. So show yourself. All right, maybe the last picture here. I don't know what I'm looking at now. What am I looking on at? On the that's red Danny's, mark. Um, neck. Neck that oh, got that's Danny's neck. Oh, that's a neck. I thought it was. No, that's where he got scratched at. Um, Smacked. Well, see, I saw, I saw a shadow back there. I thought yeah. you were going to tell me there was a shadow person back there. No, no that's probably somebody. All right, so tell the story on this one before we're going to run out of time here. All right, so it, our last investigation, we were upstairs in a room that had a lot of dolls in it and Ouija boards, and there were three of us um, upstairs. One was in a room doing an Estes method where she had the headphones on, blindfolded, asking, we were asking questions mm -hmm. and she was answering. Um, Danny was standing next to... Danielle. Danielle. Well, I'm trying. Was there three of us or was there four of us? Anyways, she he was standing next to us and he just, you know, we could tell he was uh, just a little uneasy. Um, I think somebody actually saw him in the cameras downstairs starting to get a little uneasy. And then he's like, you know, something's on the back of my neck. So we got up and just shined our flashlights and it started out as a little red mark and then it mm. grew to a bigger red mark. So, and he felt like something. Burning? Yeah, like. Wow. So something definitely. And about a half hour before that, our other investigator, Jen, yeah. got scratched on her arm. Yeah, Ooh. she came up out of the basement. She had blood on her hand. And oh she's like, gosh. oh, she had a scratch wow. on her arm. Well, I, I know it seems hard to believe, but uh, we've only got like a minute left. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> this is always fun to meet with you guys. So, Mike, I'm going to give you the last minute here and if we have time. But if somebody wants to get a hold of you, how do they do it? Um, they can find us on Facebook at um, Jamestown Paranormal Investigators. Um, if you have any questions or you need to get a hold of us, you can just send us a message there. Um, we also have a um, website, um, Jamestown Paranormal Investigators. You can leave a message there. Okay. Um, there's a link on our Facebook to get to our um, website, and there's also a link from the website to get to the Facebook. So Email. it's easy enough for you to get a hold of us if you really need us. All right. And, Email. You know, and for folks that are serious, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We don't want people just pulling your chain on all this. No, because that's, you know, it's a lot of work to pack everything up and get everybody together and get to the place and then find out there's really nothing going on. <laughs> well, and a lot of research. So we do a lot of mm -hmm. research um, sure. whenever we talk to people. But if they have questions or concerns, and that's what we do quite a bit of, is just talk to people. And, and I like the first thing you said, you're there to help people. Yeah. It is an area that not all of us have a lot of information on. So. All right, well, folks, you've been watching Chautauqua Sunrise, and my guests today have been from the Jamestown Paranormal Investigators. Guys, be safe out there, but uh, help people. That's, that's a great, great thing you do. So thanks for helping us understand some of the terminology, and I feel a little more educated today. And Catherine, welcome to the group. Thank you. <laughs> Let's do this again sometime. Bring absolutely. some of your equipment. Let's All right. Oh, yeah. You absolutely. hit me up and let me know when and we'll bring it All in. right. Let's do it next year. How about next October? Sounds That's like that. a plan. All right, folks. Have a great weekend and uh, Halloween is coming. So <laughs> peace. Peace out.
All right, so have a great weekend, and uh, you can catch us again on Spectrum 1301 throughout the week. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's dead real. Those are pretty cool pictures, actually.